Hello and welcome to Baiju's. On the 15th of August, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has formally announced that ISRO will be placing Indian astronauts in orbit by 2022. This historic announcement was made as a part of the Prime Minister's Independence Day speech. This particular mission would be India's first manned space flight and it will make India the fourth country after the United States, Russia and China to have a human space program. This particular mission has been named as the Gaganyaan and this would mark the beginning of the Indian human space flight program. India ventured into the domain of manned space missions way back in the year 1984 when Rakesh Sharma of the Indian Air Force, when he flew as an astronaut on board a Soyuz spacecraft of the Soviet Union. Since then, ISRO has held a long cherished dream of venturing into manned space missions, a mission which is built on indigenous technology. And ISRO has taken a few preparatory steps in this regard. Since 2004, ISRO has been laying the groundwork to make this dream a reality. Most of the critical technologies which are required have already been developed and validated by ISRO over the last one decade. Between 2004 and 2018, ISRO has conducted the preliminary research which is required to make the manned mission a success. So having achieved all the key technological milestones, the proposal of ISRO for an Indian human space flight program has been finally accepted by the government and it was formally announced by the Prime Minister on the 15th of August. So we need to evaluate the Gaganyaan mission and identify the possible topics which are important for your UPSC prelims and mains. We shall talk about the mission objectives and parameters. We will also talk about the technological challenges which lie ahead for ISRO. Then finally, we will conduct a cost-benefit analysis and see whether a manned space mission is viable for a country like India. First, let us talk about the mission objectives. After the formal announcement by the Prime Minister, ISRO has come out with a detailed list of objectives under which ISRO has said that it plans to launch an orbital spacecraft into the low Earth orbit. The orbital spacecraft, which is also called as a space capsule, will carry three astronauts on board. The astronauts could be both male and female. ISRO will be selecting three men or women after a rigorous selection process. And these three crew members will be placed into a low Earth orbit, which is around 300 to 400 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. The crew members will spend a total duration of around five to seven days in the low Earth orbit, during which they will be conducting a variety of experiments on board the space capsule. Please remember, the Gaganyaan mission will not include any spacewalk which will be conducted by the astronauts. This is a mission with very basic objectives. The objectives include to place three Indian astronauts in the low Earth orbit, who will continue to orbit the Earth in the space capsule for a duration of around five to seven days. During this period, the Indian astronauts will be conducting a variety of experiments. And ISRO plans to end the mission with the safe recovery of the crew module and as well as the crew members. As you can see, these objectives are very basic in nature. It does not involve any docking of the spacecraft with the International Space Station. It does not involve any spacewalks which are scheduled as a part of this mission. Instead, it's a very basic mission with basic mission objectives, which is designed to test and validate Indian technology in the field of human spaceflight programs. That's the reason why I said the Gaganyaan mission will be the foundation, it will be the basis 
of India's future human spaceflight programs. And ISRO will be launching the space capsule or the orbital spacecraft on the GSLV Mac 3 rocket. And this is where you can expect prelims questions. You can get a basic question on the mission objectives or you can get a question on the features of the GSLV Mac 3 rocket. The GSLV Mac 3 is one of the most powerful rocket which is available in the arsenal of ISRO. It is basically a heavy lift rocket which can carry a payload of around 4 tons into orbit. It can deploy a heavy payload of around 4 tons into the geosynchronous transfer orbit or GTO. And finally, remember that the GSLV Mach 3 is a three-stage rocket. The core of the rocket is made up of a liquid stage. Then it has two solid stage strap-on motors. And finally, the third stage is the cryogenic stage. These are the three stages which are a part of the GSLV Mach 3 rocket. And ISRO has worked very hard over the last 20 years to develop the crucial cryogenic technology which is required to power the heavy lift rocket which is the GSLV Mach 3. It's only such a heavy lift rocket which can deliver a payload of around 4 tons into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. Now let us talk about the mission parameters. First we will talk about the payload. The payload consists of the orbital module which is in turn made up of two components. We have the crew module and a service module. These two components, they make the orbital module. Wherein the astronauts are seated in the crew module and their life support system and their environmental conditions are maintained and monitored by the service module. So both the components, they make up the payload. Now let us look at the parameters of the launch and the descent sequence. The GSLV Mach 3 rocket will place the orbital module into the desired orbit within 16 minutes. From launch to the placement of the payload into orbit, the time taken would be around 16 minutes. Once it is inserted into the low Earth orbit, the space capsule will continue to orbit the Earth for around seven days. It is during this period that the astronauts will be conducting a series of microgravity experiments. Experiments which are conducted under microgravity conditions. These experiments will basically help us understand the various physical, chemical and biological processes. So after the desired orbital objectives are achieved, the spacecraft will be realigned and reoriented so that it can begin its descent. The descent part of the mission is considered to be the most crucial phase because the spacecraft will be subjected to extremely harsh conditions during the re-entry and descent phase. So the alignment and the orientation of the spacecraft is of extreme significance here. The spacecraft itself has to be designed to withstand the extremely high temperatures which are registered during re-entry. After the re-entry phase, the controlled descent will begin wherein the speed of the spacecraft is reduced gradually by deploying parachutes. And this controlled descent will take around 36 minutes in total. Finally, the space module will have a splashdown either in the Arabian Sea or in the Bay of Bengal. ISRO is yet to work out the final details of this mission. But as per a recent press conference held by the chief of ISRO, ISRO plans to break down the space module somewhere off the coast of Gujarat in the Arabian Sea. But ISRO is still open to other possibilities as well, wherein the spacecraft will be brought down in the Bay of Bengal as well. Or maybe the spacecraft can be made to land as well. So if these mission parameters are achieved, then ISRO will consider the Gaganyaan mission as a success and this would mark the beginning of India's human spaceflight program. Now let us sum up the mission objectives and the mission parameters by talking about the mission profile. 
This graphic here represents the sequence of events which are a part of the Gaganyaan mission. We have the GSLV Mac 3 rocket, a heavy lift three stage rocket which will carry the payload. Then after the first stage separation is achieved, the rocket will be propelled by the core of the rocket which is represented by the liquid stage. And after second stage separation, we have the cryogenic engine which takes over. That is the third stage of the rocket and it ensures a safe and successful insertion of the orbital module into the desired low earth orbit. The low earth orbit is expected to be around 300 to 400 kilometers above the surface of the earth. So once the module is successfully inserted into orbit, the astronauts on board will continue to orbit the earth for around five to seven days. They will conduct a variety of microgravity experiments. And at the end of the mission, the crew module is separated from the service module of the space capsule. The crew module, which has been separated from the service module, will be realigned and reoriented, as you can see here. And it will re-enter the atmosphere at the right angle. This will ensure that the crew module will face minimal friction. The crew module itself is designed to withstand the high temperatures which are registered during the re-entry phase. And in a controlled fashion, the crew module is brought back into the atmosphere. From here onwards, the crew module will be in free fall and it will be accelerating at a very fast rate. So this acceleration has to be gradually arrested, which is achieved by deploying the onboard parachutes. This will slow down the crew module and it will ensure a safe splashdown at a predetermined location. So during splashdown, the flotation systems are also deployed to ensure that the module stays afloat, which in turn can be recovered by the Navy and the Coast Guard. And this would complete the mission profile. In order to achieve these objectives and parameters that we have discussed, ISRO has to develop a number of critical technologies. Some of them have already been tested and there are many more challenges which lie ahead for the Indian Space Research Organization. So let us talk about these technological challenges in a sequence. Let us start with the pre-launch phase. The first challenge for ISRO is to carry out a rigorous selection process for the possible Indian astronauts who will be on board the first space mission and ensure that they receive extensive training which will prepare them for the harsh conditions that they will encounter in space. Because the entire journey right from launch to descent is riddled with a number of extreme challenges and the crew on board, they should be trained and given the right conditioning so that they will be able to overcome these challenges. So in this regard, ISRO has already taken a few steps. ISRO is already working with the Indian Air Force and both the agencies will be involved in the selection process. Because the Indian Air Force already has a set of fighter pilots who are already accustomed to flight conditions. ISRO and IAF will conduct a rigorous selection process through which three astronauts will be shortlisted. And these three astronauts will be made to undergo very extensive and rigorous training in India as well as abroad. So as a part of this program, ISRO and the Indian Air Force will be setting up an astronaut training center which will come up in Bangalore. Because Bangalore is already the hub for aerospace medicine and research. The IAF has a number of facilities in Bangalore which will provide the right infrastructure for the Gaganyaan mission as well. So the selection and training process will be largely conducted at the upcoming astronaut training center which is jointly being established by ISRO and the Indian Air Force. The next technological challenge during the pre-launch phase would be the development of the space suits which are worn by the crew members is designed to protect the crew members from a variety of dangers. This includes extreme temperature, pressure, radiation, etc. In fact, 
the space suit is an integral part of the life support system which will help the crew members to sustain so recently in the month of september 2018 isro has already come out with a prototype version of a space suit it is designed to protect the astronauts in orbit it will help them overcome the extreme conditions which are present in space apart from this isro should also focus on the field of aerospace medicine it is this domain which will help in creating the life support system it will help in the development of environment control systems as well and research in the field of aerospace medicine will also help us in creating the right training module which will help the astronauts to deal with the physical and mental stress that is imposed on an astronaut during a space flight such a training which is backed by aerospace medicine and research it will provide them the right physical and mental conditioning which is required to overcome the harsh challenges of a space flight even though the gaganyaan mission is supposed to be a indigenous mission india is definitely open for international collaboration as well because the field of space research is one domain where international cooperation is extremely essential it doesn't mean that the mission is not indigenous it just means that india is willing to promote international cooperation in the field of space research under the gaganyaan program so recently in the month of september 2018 india and france have signed an agreement the space agencies of the respective countries that is isro and cnes they have signed an agreement to jointly collaborate in the field of aerospace medicine france will help isro in developing research which is required for the life support systems which will be created as a part of aerospace medicine and research now let us talk about the technological challenges which exist during the launch phase see first and foremost we require a reliable rocket which can lift a heavy payload isro has recently developed such a rocket in the form of GSLV Mac 3 it has been successfully tested as well and like i said the GSLV rocket is based on cryogenic technology but this is one area which is still a weak link for india because india has found it very difficult to master cryogenic technology due to various uh, geopolitical and scientific challenges isro itself was placed under sanctions after the nuclear test as a result isro was deprived of the cryogenic technology which was readily available in the market so isro has struggled for almost 20 to 25 years to develop the cryogenic technology indigenously and this indigenous cryogenic technology and as well as the gslv mac 3 rocket it's not entirely reliable as of now if you compare the gslv mac 3 with the pslv rockets we will definitely find a very big difference when it comes to reliability the pslv has been a very successful rocket it has become the workhorse of isro it had a number of successful launches and it has a very small rate of failure the same cannot be said about the gslv series of rockets and especially the gslv mac 3 which is powered by cryogenic technology is still undergoing a lot of testing and development quite recently in 2014 the gslv had its first successful launch wherein it carried the crew module atmospheric reentry experiment payload this was also a part of the manned space program of india in fact the gslv mac 3 rocket has been exclusively designed for manned space missions it can definitely be used for launching communication satellites as well but the primary purpose of the mac 3 rocket is to power india's 
manned space flight program. So after this launch, the GSLV Mach 3 has been used in 2017 to launch one of India's heaviest communication satellite, the GSAT-19. These are the only two launches that the GSLV Mach 3 has had till date. So it is very early to call the GSLV Mach 3 as a reliable rocket. ISRO needs to fine tune this technology. It has to work on the cryogenic upper stage, ensure that the platform delivers without any possibility of failure. Because in this case, in the case of manned mission, we have human lives which are at risk. So there is simply no possibility for a technical or a human error. But the rocket is definitely a heavy lift rocket. It can easily lift around 8,000 kgs or around 8 tons into the low earth orbit. And it can easily lift around 4 tons into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. So when it comes to the weight of the payload, the GSLV definitely is the right launch vehicle. The only weak point is its reliability. This is something which has to be tested out in the coming days and ISRO has to fine tune the rocket technology. Then the second requirement under the launch phase is the need for a pad abort facility and a crew escape system. In fact, ISRO has successfully conducted this test in the month of July 2018. The pad abort system will basically include a crew escape system which will separate the crew module from the launch vehicle in case of any emergencies during the launch. There can be an emergency situation on the launch pad itself during which the mission has to be aborted. In that case, the crew module is separated from the launch vehicle and the module is taken away to a far away distance so that the crew members are safe from any possible explosion of the launch vehicle. Similarly, an emergency situation can develop during the launch as well. If the launch vehicle is failing, if there is a possibility that the rocket will collapse and explode, in such a scenario, we need to have an abort system which will safely remove the crew module and take it away from the launch vehicle. So this is a critical technology which has to be a part of a manned space mission. And ISRO has tested the pad abort system in the month of July 2018. In fact, this system is quite similar to the way in which a pilot ejects from a fighter aircraft. But the only difference is, in a fighter aircraft, the pilot himself is safely removed and pushed away from the aircraft. But in this case, the astronauts are not separated from the launch vehicle. Rather, the crew module which contains the astronauts is separated from the launch vehicle. Now let us talk about the challenges that ISRO might face in designing the orbital module. ISRO has been working on the orbital module since 2007. It has conducted a series of experiments and it has already come up with a prototype version of the orbital module. So this version was made public as well in 2018 after the announcement of the Indian Prime Minister. So if you look at this image which has been taken from ISRO's website, you will find that the orbital module is essentially made up of two components. We have the crew module and the service module. Both the modules are mated together as you can see here and it is located in the upper stages of the launch vehicle. This is where the payload is located and the crew members are seated here within the crew module. The crew module is designed to provide the life support system which is required for the astronauts. It will create the right environmental conditions with regard to temperature, pressure, availability of oxygen, and even in providing a radiation shield, the crew module will provide all these environmental conditions to ensure the safety of the crew. This crew module is mated to the service module, which basically contains 
the boosters which will power the orbital module. These boosters will help in realigning and reorienting the orbital module itself. So during launch and as well as while it is in orbit, both the modules are mated together. But when the descent phase begins, when the spacecraft is about to make re-entry, the service module is detached and removed from the crew module. It is only the crew module which will make a re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and it will safely bring the astronauts back to Earth. And the design of these life support systems is directly linked to developments which will happen in the field of aerospace medicine. Further research in the field of aerospace medicine will help ISRO to fine-tune the design of the crew module and ensure that the life support systems are capable of protecting the crew members who are on board. Now let us talk about the challenges which have to be overcome during the re-entry phase. The re-entry phase begins with the separation of the crew and service module. Then immediately after this, the crew module has to undergo realignment and reorientation so that it hits the Earth's atmosphere at the right angle. The angle of entry is of utmost importance here because when the spacecraft is entering from near vacuum conditions and when it is making contact with the Earth's atmosphere, it will generate a lot of friction. And since it is traveling at extremely high speeds, the friction in turn will generate very high temperature conditions. The temperature outside the spacecraft can touch around 1000 degrees Celsius during re-entry. So this has the potential to literally burn the spacecraft during re-entry. So the safety of the crew is at its maximum risk during the re-entry phase. So the crew module should be aligned and oriented in the right angle so that it re-enters the atmosphere at the right angle. And this reduces the amount of friction which is acting on the spacecraft. And the spacecraft or the crew module is also protected with layers of heat shields or thermal protection systems. These are specially designed tiles. They're largely made up of silica and carbon composites. Tiles designed out of these materials, they can act as a heat shield because they can resist very high temperatures. So the crew module, especially the cone and the base of the module is covered with silica tiles and carbon composite materials. So this will act as a thermal protection system. It is basically a heat shield which is protecting the crew from the extreme temperatures which are present on the outside. Basically, this thermal protection system will ensure that the crew will experience a comfortable temperature of 25 degrees Celsius inside the crew module, even though the outside temperature is crossing 1000 degrees Celsius. So this is a crucial technology which ISRO is working on. The initial prototypes have already been developed. It has already been tested as well. We shall talk about the two experimental missions which ISRO has already carried out in order to test the re-entry systems. Then finally, during the descent phase, the key challenge is to gradually bring down the acceleration of the spacecraft to ensure a safe and gradual deceleration. This is done by deploying the parachute systems. There are multiple parachute systems which are activated autonomously. So this is something the ISRO has been working on. Then the crew module should also deploy a flotation system immediately after splashdown. So these two systems are very crucial in the descent phase. So once the crew module has safely landed either on sea or on land, that's when the capsule is recovered and this is where we need to build the required logistics for it. First, the 
crew module should have a beacon which will emit signals carrying its location and using the beacon location the indian navy and the coast guard who will be deployed near the pre-planned site of splashdown they will immediately seek out the beacon's location and they will bring the crew to safety so these are the crucial technologies that isro has to develop and master but in the last 10 or 15 years isro has already developed and tested some of these critical technologies that's one of the reasons why the government of india has given a formal approval to the gaganyaan mission so let me mention the three critical technologies that isro has already developed and demonstrated this particular topic can be very important for prelims first experiment in the field of manned space mission was in the year 2007 isro carried out the space capsule recovery experiment or also called as sre1 this was a successful launch by isro wherein a space capsule was deployed into orbit and it was immediately brought down through the process of reentry and descent so isro was essentially testing its reentry technology all the critical systems that we have been talking about they were tested during the sre experimental launch of 2007 then more recently in 2014 the care module or the crew module atmospheric reentry experiment was carried out by launching the crew module on the first ever gslv mac3 we have already discussed this development as well the gslv mac3 rocket which was launched successfully in 2014 carried the care package as its first payload it was again a crew module designed to test the technology of reentry so both the experiments have been successful isro has validated the technology definitely there is some more work which has to be done in the coming days to ensure that the gaganyaan mission is a complete success then finally in the month of july 2018 isro has conducted the pad abort test with great success the crew escape system was successfully tested the pad abort system worked perfectly and it managed to remove the crew module and it separated the crew module away from the launch vehicle so this is again a crucial system during the launch phase because if things go wrong during the launch sequence then to ensure the safety of the crew the crew escape system can be activated which will separate the crew module from the launch vehicle so this is basically an abort sequence which is initiated either on the launch pad itself if things go wrong on the launch pad then the crew module can be separated through the pad abort system or else if a emergency condition develop during launch even in such a situation the mission can be aborted and the crew escape system can be activated which will take the crew module away to safety from the launch vehicle so this technology has also been tested successfully in the month of july 2018 now let's have a look at this image which has been shared by isro which details all the critical systems which are required for the manned space mission first we have a reliable heavy lift rocket here then the mission requires a crew module simulator for training purposes a module which simulates the exact conditions of space so that the crew members can be trained on such a simulator next we have recovery logistics here this is basically coordination between navy the coast guard and as well as isro and ensure that they put in place all the logistics which are required to safely recover the capsule which has landed then we have the recovery systems which basically includes the parachutes and the flotation devices then as a part of command and control isro will have to establish a dedicated mission control facility to monitor the space mission so this also requires communication as well which will be enabled by a deep space network apart from this isro will have to establish astronaut training facilities and infrastructure and as well as design the space suits which will ensure the safety of the crew 
then isro will have to create facilities to integrate all these systems then we already spoke about the orbital module which is being designed by isro it has been partially tested as well then the crew escape system and the pad abort system so these are the critical technologies which are a part of india's first manned space mission as you can see some of them have already been tested it has been demonstrated as well for example the gslv mac 3 has been tested a couple of times the pad abort system has been recently tested then the orbital module reentry recovery and logistics have also been tested as we have discussed earlier but definitely there are a number of challenges ahead which isro has to overcome in all these domains in designing all these crucial systems isro still has to make a lot of progress and ensure that the goal of putting indian astronauts in space by 2022 is realized in a safe and successful manner now let us talk about the viability of the gaganyaan mission india's investments in the field of space research has not only led to developments in science and technology but it has also brought about socio economic development for the country india's space program has always prioritized the national interests of the country this not only includes our defense and foreign policy requirements it also includes the priorities of socio economic development if you look back at india space program you will find that most of the investments have been channeled towards socio economic missions essentially missions which cater to the socio economic needs of the country have been promoted by isro but there are a number of critics who question the large investments that the indian government makes in the field of space research in the huge budget which is allocated to isro despite india being a very poor country there are a number of critics who question these investments the image that we are looking at here is a very infamous cartoon which was carried by the new york times after india's mars mission after india launched the mangalyaan which pushed india into a elite club of space faring nations the new york times came out with a very critical cartoon which gained a lot of criticism as well if you look at the cartoon it is not only biased it is also racist in nature it questioned india's large investments in the field of space technology when the country is facing pressing issues such as poverty malnutrition poor health and as well as poor education those who have been critical of india's space program have always questioned these large investments on the grounds that india is still a poor country which is facing numerous socio economic challenges so this is one popular argument which exists out there so upsc can definitely ask a question here wherein you might be asked to analyze the cost benefit ratio of such investments in space research whether it is viable for a country like india to make large investments in space research this is a question which has to be answered and we need to put to rest the critical arguments which exist against india's space program because like i said india's space program has always tried to cater to the socio economic needs of the country if you look at the insat series of communication satellites it powered india into the communication age then if you look at the various earth observation and remote sensing satellites be it the ocean sat be it the resource sat or the carto sat all these earth observation and remote sensing satellites have actually enabled the cause of socio economic development because they provide for better monitoring of resources it helps in monitoring crops it helps in monitoring our resources both on land and offshore but despite this isro has always been at the receiving end of biased criticism especially from the western media now if you compare india space program 
with the space program of Western countries, you will find that the Western space agencies have largely prioritized projects which have a military or an intelligence angle. Most of their satellite platforms are used for surveillance, monitoring and defense communication. Even though India has also invested in defense and reconnaissance satellites, a large part of ISRO's focus has been on catering to the socio-economic needs of the country. So this is where we need to analyze the cost and benefits associated with the Gaganyaan mission. If you look at the costs, we can definitely say that the mission is very risky because space research is naturally associated with high risk. There is a very high possibility that things can go wrong and it can result in failure, which basically is a huge loss of investment. Space research is inherently expensive as well. And especially manned space programs are extremely expensive because here the focus is on safety of the crew. So when crew safety is of utmost priority, definitely the cost associated with the mission will shoot up. And despite these high investments, there is still a possibility that the mission can go wrong and it can result in the loss of life of the astronauts. That in itself is a catastrophic event. There are a number of examples where space missions of US and even the Soviet Union, they have gone wrong and they have resulted in the loss of life of the astronauts. Then finally, space research, especially manned space missions, are time-consuming exercises. It requires years and years of effort. There would be decades of research and development which would have gone into a particular mission. As we have discussed, in the case of India itself, the research started way back in 2004 and the actual mission will probably be launched in 2022. So as you can see, space research in general and manned space missions in particular are extremely risky, they are cost prohibitive and as well as time consuming. So these are arguments which go against large investments in space research like I said, especially in manned missions. And this is particularly true for a country which is suffering from socio-economic challenges. But now, we need to analyze the benefits of space exploration. We need to look at the various advantages of space research and see whether the benefits will outrun the costs associated with space research. One of the biggest advantages of space exploration and as well as space research is that it promotes research and development in the field of science and technology. Research in science and technology is definitely a critical asset for any country. It not only generates a number of other opportunities with regard to jobs, with regard to industrial development, with regard to economic development, but it also nurtures a culture of innovation. This is one of the crucial contributions of investments in space research. The large-scale research and development efforts in the field of space exploration and in science and technology will have a number of spillover effects. Like I said, it will generate a number of jobs. Thousands of jobs can be generated. It can trigger industrial development because private industries as well as startups, they can tie up with the public sector, with the public agency, that is ISRO in case of India, and they can further come up with a variety of products which are derived from research and development conducted in the field of space research. We already see this happening in India currently. ISRO is looking to privatize the space domain, at least to an extent which is possible. ISRO is looking to share technology with the private players. It is looking at the private players who can manufacture the components which are required for space research. Similarly, we can have startups which can work with ISRO and it can come up with innovative solutions to address the challenges 
that ISRO is facing with. So in short, investments in space research and exploration will have a domino effect on the entire economy. It will trigger industrial development. It will promote the private sector and the startups to play an active role in space research. They can collaborate with the public sector and they can come up with a variety of products. So this sort of industrial development, which is triggered by space research, can generate a number of jobs. The same holds true for the Gaganyaan mission as well. ISRO has already predicted that at least 15,000 jobs will be generated directly from the Gaganyaan mission. And another few thousand jobs will be generated from the associated uh, research which will happen in the field of banned missions in India. And this in itself is a huge contribution to the economy. Apart from this, space research in general has contributed to overcome a number of socio-economic challenges. For example, ISRO is a pioneer in providing telemedicine and teleeducation facilities. India has managed to revamp its education and healthcare sector thanks to our space research. Today, we provide these space services to our foreign partners as well. For example, if you look at the Pan-African e-network project. This is a telemedicine, teleeducation project which is sponsored by India and it is meant for poor underdeveloped African countries. And ISRO is playing a lead role here. It is sharing its satellite resources and its infrastructure in the field of telemedicine and teleeducation with our African countries. Then we have our Earth observation satellites. We have our remote sensing satellites. They have the ability to keep track of disasters. They have the ability to provide early warning and forecasting services, which is a very big boost with regard to disaster management. This is obviously a socio-economic service. Then these satellites will also help in estimation and in monitoring of resources, which again directly benefits the grassroots communities. And finally, such prestigious projects such as the Chandrayaan, the Mangalyaan, and even the Gaganyaan. These missions can generate a lot of interest and curiosity in the country. It can inspire the youth of the country to take up scientific research and development as a career option. So there are a number of intangible benefits which are associated with space research. So we can use these arguments to counter the critical arguments against space research. And also remember, India is not only catering to its domestic needs through investments in space research, we are also catering to the needs of foreign partners. Like I said, one example could be the Pan-African e-network project. It is a part of India's foreign policy where we have extended telemedicine and teleeducation services to African countries. Apart from this, ISRO is providing highly reliable, and cost-effective launch services to institutions and companies across the world. The PSLV rocket has emerged as one of the most reliable launch vehicles in the world. It is also one of the most cost-effective launch vehicles. No other space agency in the world can provide competitive prices like ISRO. ISRO, through its Commercial Wing, which is the Antrix Corporation, has been providing such reliable and cheap launch facilities to various foreign players. A number of research institutions, universities, academic institutions, they have been signing contracts with Antrix Corporation to ensure that their satellites are launched through ISRO. It is in this context that a Indian media outlet carried this below cartoon after the historic launch of 104 satellites by a PSLV rocket. PSLV holds the current world record for the maximum number of satellites launched in a single mission. So this was basically a counter to the racist and biased cartoon which was carried by the New York Times after the Mangalyaan mission. This drives home the point that India has already entered the elite space club wherein foreign players are actually seeking out space services 
from India. Please remember that investments in space research is just not a waste of money. It is not just a waste of time. It is not something which can't be afforded by a poor country like India. Rather, it is a strategic investment which is actually powering India's growth. It is enabling our communication sector. It is driving India's digital economy. It is providing for various socio-economic and disaster management services. And it is also raising India's profile at the global level. Plus these launches which are carried out by ISRO on behalf of our foreign partners, it will also fetch a lot of foreign exchange to the Indian government. As you can see, the benefits in space research, they clearly outweigh the costs and disadvantages associated with it. So in this regard, you can definitely expect a main question because there have been a number of controversies regarding this topic. UPSC can ask you to evaluate the feasibility of large investments in space research. So before we conclude this topic, let us sum up the areas which are important for UPSC prelims and mains. See, with regard to prelims, the objectives and parameters of the Gaganyaan mission will be very important. Then some of the aspects of the critical technologies can also be important for prelims. But as far as mains is concerned, you can get a question on the technological hurdles which still lie ahead of ISRO in order to achieve success in this mission. You can also get a question on the feasibility of large Indian investments in the field of space exploration, whether it is justified for a poor country like India, which is riddled with socio-economic challenges, to make such large investments in the field of space exploration. So these are the possible main questions. Then finally, we can even expect an essay topic here. A broad essay topic on India's achievements in the field of space research and development or a specific topic on the viability of large investments in space research. So hope this discussion has been helpful in understanding this crucial topic. And if you find our videos useful, please like, comment and share the videos and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.